so in the last video, we learned Hooke's Law. We learned that force in a spring is equal to negative kx. We also learned that the potential energy of the spring is equal to one-half kx squared. So let's try to apply this to a problem. Okay, let's say that I have a spring. It's the wall, it's attached to the wall. And I apply eight newtons of force and compress it from its natural length, let's call it here, a distance of four meters. Okay, and I wanna ask you guys, what force would I need to compress the spring to a distance of six meters from its equilibrium point. All right, so we know that force is equal to negative kx. So the only thing I'm missing right now is k, but I gave you this first scenario where I gave you the force and the distance so you can find k. So let's plug in what we know. We know that when I apply a force of eight newtons, the spring compresses by four meters. Okay, so I can solve for k. Just divide by four, so I get that negative two equals k. All right, and oh, and units for k are newtons over meters. Okay, so I can take that information and plug that now into the second one. So in this case, I know k now, because it's the same spring, k will be the same in both cases. And I know the distance, so I'm just trying to find the force. So I get that the force is equal to negative, oops, newtons over meters times six meters. So my force is equal to two newtons. 12 newtons, rather, sorry. This answer makes sense because I'm compressing the spring more in the second scenario than in the first scenario, so it should take me, or it should take a larger force to compress that spring. Okay, let's now look at a slightly harder example. Okay, so let's say I've got a spring attached to a wall. Let's say the spring has a block attached to it. So the block's got a two kilogram mass. All right, and let's say that this spring has been compressed a distance of 100 centimeters. So it's equilibrium point was somewhere over here. So that's zero. Okay. Um, and that's, I'll give you the spring constant. That's three newtons over meters. Okay. And I want you guys to find the velocity of the block after the spring is released. And it's here. So what is the velocity? All right. Okay. So in the last, maybe two videos ago, we learned that initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy plus work is equal to final kinetic energy plus final potential energy. All right, so let's consider initial and final. So we know that this is our initial position and this is your final position. And I'll even give you the formulas. So we know that kinetic energy for springs as well is one half mv squared. And the potential energy for springs is one half kx squared. So what is the initial kinetic energy of the spring when it's right here? All right, well, when it's here, it's not moving. So its velocity is zero, it's stationary. So kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared, is gonna be zero. 
Now, what is the initial potential energy? Well, it's a compressed spring, so we can find that. We know that potential energy is one half k, which is three, x squared. So our distance from the equilibrium point is 100 centimeters. I just need to convert that to meters. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. That's one squared. I need to convert that to meters because k was given in meters, so everything has to agree. Plus work. Well, do I have any other external forces in this scenario? No. We would be looking for things like friction or an external push. So work in this case is zero. Okay. Final kinetic energy. So that's, you know, what's the energy in motion here at this point? That's what, kind of what we're looking for. So we know that that's one half times the mass of the spring, which is two kilograms, times V squared, which is what we're looking for. Now, what's the potential energy of the spring when it's here? Well, its distance from its equilibrium point is zero because it's at its equilibrium point. So X squared is zero, meaning that potential energy at its final position is also zero. Okay, so now it's just a matter of, you know, solving out the math and finding V. So when I do this out, I get 3 over 2 is equal to v squared. Take the square root of both sides, and I get that v is equal to, let's see, 1.22 meters per second. Okay. So we've gone through a couple, you know, common examples using Hooke's Law, and this sort of wraps up um, talking about Hooke's Law and energy, and in the next videos we'll move on to circular motion.